What's up, it's your man, it's your boy Usni. Welcome to the OBT show, only big time man. As you know, I'm always with the only and the unique big timer. What do you do? Big timer, it's about Larry, but you already know. As you guys can see, we got a new guest in the podcast, Usti, man. Hey, Big timers. Listen, we got somebody from St. Thomas. St. Thomas, Minnesota, man, soccer. So we're really glad to have him on the podcast. But before we start today's episode, please make sure you guys check up the other episode on Spotify, Apple Podcast, man. We're dropping a new episode every Wednesday, man. Hey, let's go. And make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hey, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel because you watching video, you don't subscribe to the channel. We feeling something. And we give you some free big time mm. content here, man. You know? <laughs> but hey, let's go ahead and let McCray introduce himself and talk a little bit about his background and everything. Pretty much, we want to know everything. They want to know everything. I'm curious about this. This is really exciting, right here, man. Yeah, no, I'm excited to be here. This is sweet. I've never done a podcast before, and you, you boys are awesome for uh, <laughs> no for no. having me on. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Okay. Yeah. No, we really, we really glad to have you, right? So when we talk about Minnesota, it's like you play obviously in the first Division One men's soccer program in Minnesota. That's something that's really awesome, and we're really glad to have you on the podcast. And it's just like. We want to know how it feels like, but before we even get into that, right? Um, let them know where you're from, a little bit of your yeah, background. We want to know more about, about you. you. We want to know more about you. They want to know more about you, man. I got you. Yeah, I'm from uh, St. Cloud, Minnesota. Uh, not born and raised, but I spent most of my life there and uh, just grew up in. Uh, I grew up in Sartell, which is nearby Oost. That's where you. That's where. Where, that's where. Y'all play against each other. I, I know. Yeah. So what? I grew. I grew up there a little bit, and then I moved into St. Cloud. Uh, okay. Going into high school, and then. Um, you know, I went to St. Cloud Cathedral, so played my high school ball there. And, okay. um, you know, you grew up in Sartell, and there's a lot of different schools there, so different players, and, uh, you know, you you make connections with people. And right, so, right. you know, a lot of people from other schools, you develop, you know, like little rivalries yep, with. And high, high school man. soccer, it was a lot of fun because of that, you know, you get to... How, you know, how, did, how, did, you, how did you get into soccer? Because I'm curious about mm -hmm. it. How did, how did you get into soccer? Like, yeah, what because, makes you like, feel you're young, yeah, I feel like right. in the U.S., you guys have a lot of choice. Hockey, basketball... Right. No, yeah. Football. Why soccer? Why soccer? Yeah. No, it's a good question. I honestly don't know. I think I tried all the sports when I was younger, and um, soccer just resonated with me. So I, I just remember from like a very young age, like maybe six or seven, just like picking up a ball and, and just like doing doing stuff with it, and then messing around, and then it just kind of, you know, I became obsessed. You know, at a very that's young awesome, age. Man. I think that's how it goes with everyone that passion. that tries to play the most. Yeah, you just passion. get obsessed with something. You're passionate about it, and. Um, you know, you just, it was like every day, just going home from school, just kicking off the shoes, going right. outside, playing. It didn't even have to be serious stuff. And, um, yeah, I have younger brothers too. And so they would just come out in the back with me. And, um, and we just spent all the time back there. I, I'm right. sure, you know, time passes. And as you get older, you kind of forget that. But I definitely remember those moments. And I think I'm going to remember them for a while because it's, yeah. it's like the, the base of it. You know, it was before right. I was playing travel ball, before I, um, you know, even took it seriously. I was just having fun. And, and my parents saw that too, and so they were like, "All right, we need to get him doing this full time. You know, full -time. this is where his energy needs to go." You know, I didn't, I didn't like other sports as much, um, and so once I started travel soccer, I mean, I was hooked like from day one. That's awesome, man. That's yeah. that's really so. But like nice. you know, be like honest. Larry, I, I mean, I don't, I know my career. I heard, I've heard about him in Sarcel. You know, that right? About, what did you hear about? No, him? I'm you saying like, tell like us so, more about it, man. Because I know you were playing with like Sarcel travel team, right? Mm -hmm. What made you? leave the team and like you like okay i want to go to the cities or i want to go to the bigger team with mm -hmm. like more comp competition yeah no i mean i played uh u9 until u14 i believe it was my last year with um cmysa or st cloud so you know i played on that team for a while and we were doing really well and um i obviously have like very close friends still to the day that were on that team and so you know we built up a lot and i think as players we all do something separate than what the team does like even outside the team itself so like i did odp um, Olympic development program and, I, and that led me to meet other people from other clubs and become close with other people too and um, it got to a point where like the age development for me I think kicked into a different gear at 15 so when it was U15 that's when I made the uh, switch to Twin Stars in the cities um, and so when I joined Twin Stars Academy at U15 the training level it was four days a week every single week I mean it was just like a different kind of level of training in the winter time it was all that so um yeah I mean it wasn't a personal thing it wasn't anything I just I knew I wanted to play college soccer from when I was like 12 maybe 12 or 13 so I knew 
talking to people, people saying, oh, you need to do this. And I was like, okay, we got to do what we got to do. And it was tough because it was joining a completely new team. You know, I was so used to playing with um, with all the guys from the St. Cloud team. You know, I wasn't used to traveling and, you know, my parents weren't used to traveling. So they right. would drive right. me, you know, I didn't have my license yet. And so <laughs> it was uh, it was a shift for sure. sure. And it was difficult because you leave home and it's like you don't hang out with friends. Right. You don't do a right. lot of stuff. So it's like every night you're driving. So it get complicated. No, yeah. like, so like, okay, I know you being like, you know, kind of humble right now, but like, <laughs> I, know, I, I, I like, played what? him, you know, I played him, I played him. I know he's a big time player, you know? So like you playing Sartes, and I said, you know, I did my homework on him before I get here. <laughs> you know, so like you guys were kind of like one of the best players in the team, you know, or the best player of the team. So you left there and then, okay, you come to the cities. Now you're in the team where you're one of the best players, you know, or you're just a good kid now. Everybody have your level. How that make you feel? How, mm -hmm. Was that like a hard transition for you? Or? Yeah, it was tough at first, especially. Um, I think what happened was really weird because like, you know, you play high school season. It's like August until like November ish. Like and then I remember my first game of playoffs my freshman year. And this was before I joined the team for, for um, I think it was 2015, 2016, whatever. Mm -hmm. I broke my leg, so like I broke my ankle, so I dealt with an injury then, so I came into the team not even playing. New teammates, new coaches, new trainings, new all of that, so it was like really different. And um, when you're not playing, you don't make the relationships, you know that, right. you know, if you're not right. playing, you can't really like yeah. bond with guys as much, right. But, right. but I got healthy again, and that was good, and I was able to jump back into training and, and then still work my way back up from an injury. and. Um, yeah, it was different. It was different for sure because that team, at that time, it was a lot of players from different. We recruited players kind of from like different areas, so you didn't have just like guys from one city in the cities. You know, it wasn't just, and that's how a lot of the clubs are now too. But it wasn't just local guys. It wasn't. It was a a pool of players from like all over the cities area, and then some like me coming from other places. So especially St. Cloud. Like. It, yeah, no, far far. I was probably the farthest one, but um, no, it was still. A great experience because it was like the level went very very high. Yeah, I remember. I don't Everyone know. If you, I don't know if you remember, but like, um, I don't know. We played against you guys one day. I was with Logan Fusion. I remember. If you, I don't know we if you remember. I, yeah. We played a few times. Yeah. In scrimmages. Yeah. I, know. Yeah. I don't know. It was like our senior year. Okay. Yeah. So we played against you guys, and I was with Logan. Like, damn, we should have been. We should have been this team. <laughs> you know. Because, like, bro, <laughs> he went to the wrong team. Yeah, man, no, no. You know, like, you should have been. I was you're not the good team. enough. No, no, you know, sometimes you're in the team. <laughs> the team is good. You know? Right, right, right. But, you know, sometimes we, we don't have a good striker. And I, that was my first time in the U.S. playing against a team right. where it was, like, complete. In, at least in high school. Right. Like, you know, like, the high school period. I was like, damn, there's actually ballers in the U.S. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the, their team was actually tough. Like, being there is just yeah. something. But, like, the Minnesota, you talk about Minnesota Twin Star, right? Because that's mm -hmm. important. That's because. Are you playing NPSL with them right now? I'm not, no. I'm not playing on an NPSL team this summer. Okay. So, yeah. um, because cause, cause I noticed that they just reopened their NPSL and mm -hmm. it's just like the whole new team. I didn't know you were from that academy. So, how, how did you like the academy over there? It was awesome. I think um, my development and my team was really very put together well and we had really good coaching. Okay. Um, and, you know, the training level was, like I talked about, so high where it's like you jumped into... Um, a training session and you had to switch on like right, right. away there wasn't right. there wasn't a lot of time to joke around you know we had dome time so we had to be on their time right you know we couldn't just stay there and um it was really good i think i it made me more disciplined as a player it taught me about what it takes to to try to go to the next level and um and i was already committing to something and my family we were already committing to driving there and it was like it made it even That's better awesome, that man. i was getting the experience from it you know yeah, but so, like, um, talk talk about it, right? Moving forward with the uh, um, you in high school, right? Let's talk a little bit more about your high school career and everything. Big timers, if you reach this part of the video, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you guys subscribe and you guys check the other episode that we post to stick up to the end of the video. Like, how was your career in high school? Right? It, it was awesome. I really enjoyed high school soccer. Okay. I think that's always a debate sometimes with like, um, you know, playing DA, which is not as much anymore. But when right. I was in high school, right. it was it was Development Academy and then you had play club DA? and high school. So I didn't play DA. Okay. I have friends that play DA and I have nothing against DA. The development paths are just completely different because right. one, you have, right. you have this like three or four month difference with high school soccer right. and the games that you play outside of it. But I loved high school soccer. I loved being able to play with like friends from high school. I thought that was something that um, 
help me maintain good relationships, especially when you go and travel, like uh, playing club. So then you don't play with them, but you still get together for high school soccer. Right, right. So I have a ton of friends that played soccer in high school. So I was able to play with them still. And, um, and being able to play against, like I said, with the rivalries that were in the small area, you know, yeah, yeah. have a lot of schools in yeah. one area. It wasn't just like one school in a city. It was like two or three around you that were like competing at the very same level. And, um, you know, Sartell is in our section, yeah. Apollo is in our section. Sartell. And those games, those games every year were just like. Yeah, I remember they were telling me we cannot lose against this team. So like, yeah, how, 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 how did you, uh, <laughs> I'm actually interested, like, how did you, how did you go in against Sartell? Cause Mino Sartell wasn't it. Even though Mike and Usni was playing there, he wasn't it. I think we lost 3-0 against right, them. Right, that's what I thought. No, nah, we did lose. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I think <laughs> <laughs> I think later my so our team got as Cathedral got better as we got older. I think the okay. team just like developed at the they same grew. time. Okay. We grew to, at the same time. We didn't like lose pieces and have to replace too many. Right. We really like pushed in and like my junior senior year we were really really good. Mm -hmm. And um up until that point, Sartell was better than us, I would say, and then maybe my junior senior year we probably I Take think over. we won both the games. Right. So then it was what I, it was whatever, but it was um it was always tough. And but that's what I liked about it. But later here, like I know, like like I said, Mark is being so humble right now. But I remember like our senior year, he was the MVP of our conference. What? He didn't say that. He got an MVP here, man. He's being so humble right now. He was he was the player. I don't know how many goals you scored that, that year? Thirty one? Like fifty? Regular season? Yeah. Or I think it was third. I think it was 29 regular season. Yeah. I think I had seven in playoffs. That's a big time in the building, man. Yeah, it's a really big time. So, my career, like, so, like, right now, when you look back, do you think your high school, like, the high school prepare, prepare player for college? Do you think so? Just the high school um, soccer. You know, like, not, not like, because you play like you, you were doing extra with your travel team and stuff. Right. Let's just remove the twin stars there. Just your mm. high school, like, the practice, the play around you. Do you think they were like, Kind of getting, making like Macri ready, ready for, for college. college for the ball or no? Um, no, I would say no because, and it maybe it depends on the high school, but I can only speak from my experience. So I think I would say no because it's a very short timeline, and and the level of games too is it's different. You know, when you go to a big high school in the cities, it might be different. But even then, I don't think I think you have to be playing at a top club or at least getting the best training possible. It doesn't have to be a club necessarily, you know, if you're getting the best training possible and you're going to showcases or you're doing whatever, you know, it's, it's whatever works for you. But I think it's important to have regular hard training year round and getting hard games too. And high school just never w was like that for me. I so it was very it's like, just like one or two game, but like overall it's not. It I, was, it would be in, you know, over the course of the season, it was the, the big rivalry games. And then you play, you know, one or two teams from the cities. And then, you know, those were the hard games. And then the training level though, it's varied because it's, it goes for like three months and then you're done. Right. And then everyone goes and does whatever, they play a different right. sport or they're done playing a sport. And so it's like, you don't, you don't build anything versus club it's like every single year i think you build off of off of what you were doing and you build week by week and um and at least that's what it was for me and i think that's why so many i went to play college soccer and I, so many from my team went to play college soccer too right. if you look at the team right. and you look at the other teams we were competing with that was the level that it was um it was going hard every single day for you know six seven months that's how it was, you know. We didn't really have a ton of breaks. We had like Christmas breaks, but even then, you know, we would have tournaments. We would, you know, be traveling for showcases. It was a life, um, and it was it was awesome though. But you like you from you know going from, to Cathedral, right? Transferring to the pole, right? For your first um, for your first year in college, right? Mm -hmm. What was the biggest difference? But like? Hiller, before before you talk about okay. it, like how, how do you find the pole? How did oh, I find right. it? Yeah. <laughs> like, How'd yeah. you get recruited by yeah. Exactly. That's actually a good question. Yeah, no. I, into it. So basically, like, when we go, you kind of join in and you know that you have to do, like, showcases and college okay. camps. So you, individual ones, not uh, team showcases. So you go to these individual ones and you just, there's a ton of coaches there. Um, and I was always, like, not someone to, like, go just, like, reach out to random coaches and just shake their okay. hand. Like, I wanted to be more specific and like find something that I actually was interested right, in rather right. than trying to I don't know impress everybody I guess but um no I saw DePaul coaches at one of them and it was a previous coach not even their current staff and basically we were just talking about the school talking about it and then I looked it up and I think my team 
her club went down there to Chicago for a tournament. So then I, okay. was, I was able to go around the city and I was just like, oh, this is sweet. Like Chicago is my first time being there. I was a tourist. How did you like Chicago? It's awesome. Yeah. The city's great. He's from Chicago. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Really? I didn't know that. I'm glad you, I'm glad you like Chicago. Cause... <laughs> no, the city's great. Okay. No, I love it. It was, it was, uh, it was a great experience living there. Yeah. And basically though, yeah, I, I met the old coach that was there. One of the old coaches was able to have kind of a talk and a visit, but then it was a new coaching staff that actually recruited me to go there. So then it happened at a showcase, I think, where I was, um, they knew my interest in the school and they came and watched a game of mine or two games, I think in, in Florida, and then just reached out to me after. And I don't know, man, like that first text you get from a college coach is like, yeah, it's like, yeah, like, it's like one that you're interested like, in too, especially you're like, that was cool. Like, and I'm young still. I'm like a right, junior, I think, right. when this happened or sophomore. So I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, you know, I'm reaching out, talking, and it felt like a milestone, I guess. Like, it felt like I reached a new goal right. because I, you know, I broke a new ground, and yeah, it was it was awesome. And then you know, you just keep up contact, and I think I went to their camps and all of that, and then ultimately I kind of singled in on just them, and I committed really early. That's that's I actually interesting. I committed early and um and I got it out of the way and I don't I don't have any even though I've transferred from DePaul I don't have any any regrets of committing and going there um even like assessing other options people are like oh would you have wanted to go somewhere different and at right. the time no I mean I loved it you I loved, loved my it. visit there it was awesome I had no reservations about going and then you know you find your path as you go somewhere I think that's the important thing is you can't look on decisions it's more about like the way you got there and what happened so. But no, it was it was super cool. But I want to talk a, more, a little bit more about camp, right? You just talk mm -hmm. about camp, how you got, you know, you went to depot camp. Like, how does that work? Because I don't know how camp works, right? Mm -hmm. So I heard a lot about camps. I see college doing camps. Is it like if a coach is interested, is him inviting him or is the coach inviting you to the camp or you have to pay to go to the camp? Like, how does that work? Or it's like open door, anybody like can come. Camp, right. it's like I, open working camp. So right. they how advertise them. Okay. Basically, I, I don't know how they advertise my guests, but it was okay. one most of the time where it was like my parents would tell me like, hey, there's this camp opportunity. And it was, they were normally pretty far away. They don't have a lot. None of them are in like Minnesota um, that I went to. So there were ones in like Illinois that I would go to. And I think well, maybe in Wisconsin and other places, mostly Illinois though. And they would pull together just a bunch of coaches from all right. all around the country right. and bring them there. Go to you go to the camps as an individual. Um, you might get like a bib number. I'm trying to remember how it all went down, but basically you just go there as an individual or maybe like a couple group of players. Mm -hmm. But um, they split you up and it's all you know they they mix and match you with different players and you just play games and you do some training sessions and um, and in the meantime you know that there's coaches watching, so it's not like a normal training. So like you know, you can't, you don't slack off. Yeah, right. Like you're going, you're going in there and you know what's going on. Like, right. you know, a coach is watching you mostly. And, um, and I just, I think the best advice I heard was just, you always are told to just like, just be yourself, like do what you normally do. Yep. And you know, what we normally did when with club helped because we normally were going hard. We were normally, um, training hard and, and putting in the work. And it wasn't like I had to feel like I needed to do something else. So I was just, I was just trying to play the way I normally just play. Be you. Yeah. yeah. But like, what is it? So you went to the camp, right? Because mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I've been to some camps sometimes. I've seen some player. I'm like, damn. Damn. Who's you shot? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like you're not scary, but you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, mm -hmm. okay, this is another level. That, do mm -hmm. that, did, like, did you have that feeling like you went to the camp and you see some player like, damn. He like, good. I thought it was good. I thought, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, no, no, I you, do. You, you kind of started doubting yourself a little bit because it's like, you're like, this is another level. You know, I have to step right. up a little bit. For right. sure, yeah. And I've had that experience in different areas too, not just in the camps, like when you're playing against games too and you're like, oh, man, like, they're better than us, like, or this player is better than yep. me. And I'm like, I get upset at that, but at the same time, I'm like, okay, I need to reach, gotta keep it competitive, try to reach you know? that level. Yep. But especially at the camps when you're younger, because it's like that, it becomes more individual. So you're competing, you know, a coach is watching, you're like, well, the coach is gonna look at him over me. And it's like, you know, you just, you yeah. see someone else doing stuff and you're like, well, you gotta just, you gotta just try to focus on yourself <laughs> right. and, and like, think about all the positive things that you bring. and. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's been times where I've seen a player and I'm like, well, what do I, what do I got to do? You know, what do right, I got to do? Right. And sometimes though, they have their own flaws. Maybe it's, um, you know, something on defense or maybe it's something where they're, they're not passing enough or whatever. And maybe they were doing flashy dribbles. And um, I don't know, I just try to reassure myself like that I'm, I'm me. 
and I, mm. I got myself here in a way that that was my own, you know? Because at the end of the day, you you can't control what other people do. You can only control yourself. Mm -hmm. But here, the one career, like, so you went to, you get out of college, okay, camp, everything, everything went well for you, found a college and everything, graduate from high school, and you went to the pool. How was that for you? Uh, Actually, let's talk about your first day. You okay. got you got in there, right? Uh -huh. You and your parents, the dorm and everything you set up, everything is good. Now the coach meeting, the first team, well, how was that, that first meeting for you with the whole team? Like the season is starting, now we're in August. The season started, or July, yep. depending when you got yep. there. We come there, the first, you know, the first meeting when coach talked to everybody, how was that for you? Mm -hmm. It was um, another milestone. Like when I talk about, you know, when you first break ground with a coach contacting you and then you get there. Right. Um, and very quickly, it's like it, it's a business, college soccer, and it's um, oh, very you believe it's it different. Is? And I, yeah, no, I, I believe it's a business. And, okay. Uh, no, we're gonna talk a little bit more about it because that's interesting. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I, I mean, it's a business in the way where okay. things change so much from when I and I've I've thought this for a while where it's like, I enjoyed so much of soccer because I was just like uh, letting go, like right. being free right. about it. Right. And when you get there, even though I was disciplined as a club soccer player. It's it's ten times more discipline than when you get when you get to the college level, and you just have to um, you have to learn from a lot of your mistakes because you're gonna make them yep. as a freshman. You're gonna get yep. you know you're gonna get called out. You're gonna get right. um you're gonna get in trouble, and uh, and it was it was difficult being in situations like that and feeling like that kind of vulnerability, especially you know you're gone, you're a freshman, yep. you're dealing with a lot of stuff, and there's other freshmen too, so you're competing with them, and that's just how it is. But um those meetings were definitely you know intense you have serious game day meetings and film sessions yep and you you basically get a you get thrown into the fire and then you have to just like figure it out but that's how you grow is those type of moments so you grow from from feeling a little bit vulnerable and feeling like you it, uncomfortable you know and then that's how you learn a lot about who you are as a person as a player yep so it was it was a really interesting experience that i would take from there uh and I, I feel like you know a big reason that i left was because of the virus happening and then you i want to be closer to home so then right. you know that That's it kind of gave me an out though because i was dealing with some stuff there and i was like well i'm not sure that this is the best place for me as a player but in the, at the end of the day i look back on the experience i wouldn't change it again like i wouldn't go back so and, like, and wish it didn't happen so what 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 did you learn there actually as a player mm -hmm. Uh, I learned that the game moves really fast, and you <laughs> yeah. have to, and, and you have to, uh, you have to adapt to you how the to game adapt, moves. Man. You can't you really, even though you're your own player and you have your own tendencies, you have to adapt to what's going on and, and recognize like there's. I mean, when I was at DePaul, we played Georgetown, the year they were undefeated. And no, no, Georgetown, the NAIA school. The, no, oh, Georgetown, the, the, the D1. East. Okay, <laughs> yeah. from Georgia. Big no, Georgetown from Washington D.C. Oh, that. okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, Big East school, and they went undefeated that year and won the national championship. And um, what was the game? And we we tied them zero zero. Oh, so we were one awesome. of two teams all year, I think, to tie them that that game. We weren't in the game much. They had, I think, they controlled almost every aspect of the game statistically, right? But you know, I got on as a freshman for a little bit of time, and it was like I didn't think I didn't touch the ball. I don't even know if I Damn. touched the player, because it was <laughs> you know that's how it was. Like that's they were tough. moving. <laughs> But that, that's how the game was going, and that's how a lot of games were at the time. And, and that was different for me as a player because I like having the ball. I like doing this. But then you learn a lot about what it takes then, you know, what it's going to have to take for you to win. And as a freshman, I don't know if I completely embraced it, but as I've gotten older, I embrace it more. Yeah. You know? yeah, that's, that's actually awesome, right? Um, it's important to talk about the athletic part when it comes to, like, college soccer and, and then your experience at the pool. But, like, how was you as a student, right? Your classes life because it changed from high yeah, school right? college life, you're in like, college there's yeah. parties there's bars and mm -hmm. stuff right. so i think you have more to tell us about it yeah in in my freshman year it was a change being away from my friends from okay. back home but we maintained good relationships right. and kept up and right. talking and yeah. you, when you join a college team you're joining a family a family too right. so you meet you meet a lot of players and you meet the, them as people also because you, you hang out so much you're traveling together um, and so when you're doing schoolwork or you're doing all these things you kind of still have that out with soccer and it's a, a very cool connection you have with teammates and that's why I love playing sports and that's why I love you know being on teams yep. is you're able to make yep. those connections um, and then school is just like I mean 
it was a big change with school because like I was doing like classes downtown Chicago. I know. So I was like taking the, the train. Has the nicest campus it's, in in the city. It's Take nice. You? Yeah. It's the nicest uh, campus. Guys, Listen. I know you guys the both film, but like I said, what? Loyola. Nah, Loyola is <laughs> up north. It's all the way up north. Loyola's like, got Loyola's not close to this. It's close, but it's not as close as DePaul. Right. Downtown? Just depends on what your preference is, I guess. No. I was cool with DePaul's campus. It was very different being in a, such a tight space like that. You know, small streets. Yeah. I didn't have a car there. So and it was the like, fa fast space, too. Everything is like... Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, yeah. catching the train yeah. for class. <laughs> that's <laughs> something, the red line? If you don't hit the train, you miss you class. class. You yeah. have to email your teacher. But no, yeah, I take the red line. The red line. And, but, and then you're getting on and you're getting off with like... I know. Business people and like normal people right, and right. like crazy people sometimes so so, <laughs> like, so how was the it. how was the transition okay so you left home went to chicago okay different lifestyle you have to adapt that and then boom you come back to minnesota again mm -hmm. how was that for you yep because i'm not gonna lie to you okay at first like i was following you know when i when i left it was him logan couple players i was like okay, okay i play against this guy i'm i'm like i gotta keep looking what they're doing you know and i heard my career coming back to minnesota Mo, number one reason I came out was like he didn't have playing time in the Paul. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But like now that you're telling me it was COVID, I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Coming back, because a lot of people came back home. Myself, I came back home. Even right. I play, what right. I, what I, I play at the Juco, I was, I came home because I was like, I want to be home now. Right. You know? But I heard my career came home because he didn't play back in, what is his name, the Paul. You know? But like when he came back here, how was that for you? Because I'm like, maybe some people's like, okay, he didn't play in the Paul. Now he's coming back here, you think, you know what I'm saying? Like some, type of like weird competition how was that for you yeah i feel like um the so when COVID happened it the season i should say itself was hard for me because i didn't play as much as i wanted to okay and so then i feel like as a freshman i needed time to process it and maybe if i got a second season at DePaul like with no COVID happening you go back i don't think if COVID doesn't happen and i'm still there for spring season and all that who knows? Because spring season right? is a really good time. Right. Seniors leave. They give a lot of players chances. You have more training time. If you go away, if I were to go away at normal time from from DePaul for the summer, feeling okay about it, I don't think I would have left. So right. COVID gave me that out. Oh, okay. But I was kind of already feeling that a little bit of tension, a little bit of uncertainty, and um, and you know there was talk about St. Thomas moving to Division One while I was at DePaul, and I. As soon as I started feeling uncertain there, then it was like, well, you know, I could go home. You know, I'd be an hour from home. My family could come watch. I could go home more. You see still playing D1. Yeah, right. and they'd be playing D1. So I would have still had a lot of different things for me there. And when that, so when it came where COVID happened and then you have this transition, you're sent home. You know, I didn't choose to go home. I was literally kicked out of school yeah. there. Everyone was. <laughs> so everyone has to go home. So then I'm like, okay, so I'm here now. And then you just start talking with your family and you, you realize that this might be the next path for right. me. So it was a lot of stuff. And I've always tried to kind of follow my heart with those decisions um, and figure it out as I go, which is not always the best decision. You know, sometimes you make mistakes like that, but I feel like this pathway has led me to a good place. And, um, and you know, when it happened, it, it was like I made the change and it felt like it was just going to be another another journey and that's kind of what I like about it is it's just a new journey for me so you know it was a lot of stuff I take from DePaul I think about it all the time and I constantly find times like uh, find lessons from my time there uh, because it was it taught me so much that I didn't even realize at the time okay yeah. so like what what is the number one like obviously if you have, like life lesson that you learn in DePaul soccer wise that you like right now you like before you went there even though you knew, but like, you know, it didn't really like, I don't, it didn't really tell you anything. But now you came here, you learned it, and now you're applying your game and you take your game to the next level. Mm -hmm. What do you think that, what is that one thing? It's like, the, like you said, the speed of the game? Speed, speed of the game is one, I guess, as a, just in part of the game. But I would say just like the serious, seriousness that you have to have towards it, especially in your trainings and especially on game days, um, you just can't can't take a day off I guess you man. know you can't you can't think it's gonna be um man. a different type of game each game you have to approach in the same very serious way right. so I've tried to do that as I left and the more I recognize like my time there was very very effective in teaching me like 
how serious you have to take some of this stuff and that's why i call it a business or that's why i say it's more like a business yeah at the end of the day your coaches have jobs on the line you know you're you're fighting for something too right. and and that's kind of the mentality that we get there is okay we have to fight you know you have to fight for something right. um and it also putting the team above yourself and and fighting for something bigger than just yourself you know when you're playing club it's different because the goal is to then get to college yeah and when you get to college obviously some you have the goals of going pro so you have different goals that way but coaches make sure that those goals don't undermine the team yeah. and so then you know you yeah. have the collective team where it's like you know everyone's got to fight everyone's got to fight for each other and you got to fight because that's the only way you're going to beat another team doing the same thing is you got to just fight more than them you can't but like, have but but by saying like everybody got to fight you know we talked to logan mm -hmm. um, logan lomo mm -hmm. and he was saying when he went to college he became more like a team player because like in high school let's say you play like a 10. i'm a 10 you always a 10. but it's like in college He's, he's not a 10, whatever the coach put in. Yeah. He's, a mid, he's a CDM, he's a left back, he's a yeah. center back. Do you think you became more like a team player and stop just being like, okay, I'm an eight or I'm a, I'm a CDM or I'm a winger? Not necessarily my freshman year. And I think that's probably what hurt more is I didn't know, like, you know, I went in thinking I was one thing and then I didn't adapt as much. And then, you know, you have that conflict there. But as I left, tried to like take lessons from it and then, you know, you realize that you just have to change different parts of your game. And then, you know, I love going forward more than I do defending. But it it takes more now because I've left DePaul. You realize that. So it takes more of that complete effort. It takes more of, OK, if I was a 10, I also have to act as an eight and I have to right, get back. Right. I have to cover more ground. And um, and that was another thing I remember too the transition from club and from um, high school soccer into college was you just can't stop moving. When you talk about speed of game, it's not just the fast that like how fast the ball moves. It's like you have to cover spaces more. So then you just learn those things as you go. And for, like I said, you learn from mistakes. So when I'm not covering space and you get yelled at and you don't like getting yelled at. So then it's like, well, OK, I need to start covering these spaces <laughs> right. more. So it just it happens that way. It happened pretty naturally. I didn't really have a lot of people like before I left, like sitting down and sitting me down and telling me this is how it's going to be for you. Like right. you're going to get this happen. Right. I went in and like I said, you get thrown into the fire. So, um, but it, that's what I mean when I say, you know, fighting for your teammates also is like covering ground for your right. teammates, right. not, uh, you know, you might argue with your teammates and you might yell, but it's for a common goal, it's for a right. purpose. And, and that type of passion ultimately, I think brings people closer to if you have an understanding. Yeah, but, but, but something I wanna just, just real quick, right? So, you know, you have going from the pole and learning all that with your experience and everything, right? So we're going to, you coming back home, right? And then we all, just in the news, right, big time news, we heard about St. Thomas going D1, right? And then everybody's excited about it, open the new soccer program, they're about to get, of course, right? You come from D3 to D1, you have to do a good recruitment, right? You have to get some more, you know, experience, a better player, player right? To, 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 to handle the level of the game, right? Yeah. How, how was for you to transfer you from the pole to 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 St. Thomas, how did it go for you? Like, what? Why St. Thomas? Like, what what makes you want to go there? And and then was it the project looking nice for you? Did you like what the you know the coaches you meeting the coach and talking with him? Like, did you like it at first? Like, how how was it for you? So I knew the coach. Yeah, okay. uh, Coach Lowry coached me when I was in uh, club soccer. Okay. So then I knew him, and I knew that I was coming back to you know I kind of knew what he was building there, okay. and I knew players also that played club with me that still, or that play at St. Thomas also, and still play there. So then I, I knew some people there. It wasn't completely right. new. Right. Being an hour from home helps, and it's like, you know, you can go home more. So then that was yep. a big one for me, is just being closer to home. But then when I joined the team, it's like, it feels good building a project too. Yep. You know, it feels good having something to build towards and, and knowing that there's something at the end. And um, I think that it was a weird transition because when you're, you you start in the COVID year, one you don't get to meet a lot of people because everything's right. closed, right. and then or you right. just don't get to like meet a meet a bunch of new people. You don't go to in person classes. You have a lot of stuff online. Yep. Everyone's was doing their own thing. So even in team settings though, we were in like small pods, you know, because you can't um, have too many people together in one. So then it was a weird transition at first, and eventually we grew out of it, and we had a spring season, and basically we were playing Division Three before the Division One right, season. So right. then we played a couple, like five or six, spring games against the other Mayak teams at the time, yep. and then 
was able to build off that because that was the first time you're playing in a while. So that was the transition. And I think um, for the most part, it went smoothly. It was just difficult being away from like highly competitive soccer for a while. Okay. So yeah. so uh, I know St. Thomas play in the Horizon League, right? Summit. The Summit. Summit, yeah, the yeah. Summit League with uh, I think you guys have Western Illinois. In Western's there. in it. Western yep. Illinois and some other school. Logan? That's Logan. Yeah. That's yeah. Logan, man. That's Logan. But like, how is how is the you know? Because I know the poll is the poll to play uh, Summit League too. No, big, right? Big East. Yeah. Exactly. Big East. Because that's that's a bigger conference, I would say. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say bigger, but all the conference, I feel it's like they're competitive. competitive. But obviously, you have There's more level competition. To it. Exactly. There's level to it, obviously. So how was the big difference from you from going to play with the pole and then coming to St. Thomas? I'm not trying to say here that St. Thomas is less competitive, no, no, but like, we have to understand that they come from a D3, mm -hmm. you know, and going D1, obviously. You so are, you, are you talking about just St. Thomas or the whole league? No, 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 the, the St. Thomas. St. Oh, Thomas, Thomas itself. Okay. St. Thomas itself. No, not the whole conference. Mm -hmm. St. Thomas is itself. Yes. It was a transition because they were Division Three, Right. And so it wasn't the same level, and it wasn't the same level of training, but right. it also just – they you can't have the same level from Division exactly. Three to Division One, And yep. DePaul has been Division One, I, I think, their entire existence. Exactly. So then you just build up from that. Right. But that's what I talk about when it's a project. And that's why I think it was Disney. exciting coming back. Yep. And I wasn't the only Division One transfer. And there's a few other Division One transfers now. And so then you just have those players that come in the team. And then you try to build from that. And you try to build from a core. They also had a good core that was there, and so then you try to build from that core also and try to move forward with, with who you have while also getting new pieces. Yeah. And um, and transitions, I mean, it's part of life, but they're difficult. No, and so, right. you know, when you join a yeah. team and you join a team and you're new, and then also you're joining the new, you join like a new Summit League and yeah. you leave Mayak and you're playing harder competition, yeah. it's Make me remind me about when different. Bruce joined St. Cloud State. I was bullying him, man. No. <laughs> I was. No, no. I, he, he's not going to tell her here. He's not going to say nothing about it right here, bro. I doubt, everybody I doubt knows. Bruce let you bully Everybody him, knows I was my, bullying him. Yeah, yeah, he knows. What? Nah. No, but like. He, Eating him wrong. No, Larry, you say, you say something that's really important, right? <laughs> yep, yep. So he come, coming from the ball, I'm pretty sure it was hard transition for him to yep. be there, but it was hard transition for St. Thomas yep. itself. Right. Because right. like even right. like even if you're new in the D1 level, right. it's gonna be you, you cannot come there and just adapt yourself. You right. know what I'm saying? But there is one thing my career actually said, I really wanna like go back to it. So you said that he didn't have no one to tell him how D1 was, you know? No one actually yeah. sitting, like sit sit down here, brother, this is how it is. Yep. You know, you gotta do this, this and this. So now you got a younger brother. Mm. They want to go D1 tomorrow to play. What's you going to be advice to oh those man, guys? That's a good question. So I, I'm my, curious about that. My, younger, my middle brother right. uh, just graduated, and he's going to Gustavus. So he's playing Division Three, but okay. Gustavus is a top program in uh, Mayak. I mean, every, big year, big three. every year they uh, put together Make sure you come to the Big Time Podcast, man. We need you next. <laughs> you know where to live. Really <laughs> man. <laughs> For real, though, no, in Gustavus, they're a top program, and they're, they're building something at that level, and he's excited about that. Okay. So, I have always been very tough on him and from when we were playing younger and I think as we've gotten older I've probably loosened up a little bit but when I was when we were younger I was tough on him and you know I wouldn't ever um just let him go whatever I would always try to give right. him advice but at the end of the day everyone's experiences are different but like, so. but like you said like you wouldn't go hard, you would let him go but you would still give him advice what would right. that advice be um, if you're sitting here right now what would you tell him yeah I would tell him stuff about like the mistakes that I made as right. a freshman right. And that, you know, he should look out for those moments. And then, you know, when they come or if, if he's feeling a certain way that I've told them that I felt, and then he knows kind of what to do. And, and we've had those discussions before. And um, That's good. it's a part of developing as a player. And I'm, I hope to be of help to him. But at the end of the day, too, you know, he's, he's going to be able to grow on his own. Right. I know that. Right. So, right. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. And at, the, yeah. and at the end of the day, that's what it is that it comes down yep. to. And his coach is going to be different than how my coach was. And so, you know, the way the trainings are will be different. And he'll also have his own issues he might deal with that were separate from what I was dealing with. And so, you know, all of it will be a new experience. But. I've let him know that I'm a resource to him because, you know, as you go off to college, yeah. it's different, like difficult. You join a new team, it's difficult. You know, everything becomes different. And he was, again, like I was, he was the, you know, top player at Cathedral. He was, you know, getting the ball a lot. He was doing all this stuff, scored, assisted a ton of goals. And, um, and so that's going to change perhaps. Yep. And that's just how, that's just a reality that it's not going to be the statistics that it was. 
but you'll be able to grow as a player even yeah. more. Yeah. So it might not feel like, oh, I'm not scoring as much, I'm not assisting as much, but you're going to take a lot more from the game. Right. Right. You're actually going to become a much better player. Yeah. Um, and that's that's just how it is. But, yeah, no, I've, we've had those discussions. No, but that's good because, you know, it's important for him for his grow. You say that, and then learning from you while watching your game, going to you, you, your game, you know, it makes him dream and be more passionate about it. St. Thomas, we, we saw you guys play this season, right? It was really interesting. So Us and I, we made a video about, you know, St. Thomas getting St. Thomas. to the D1. You know, we met a, a long time ago, man. But the thing that I'm really interested about when I watch you guys' season is how you guys picked up at the end of the season. And that's a good thing. You know, first year program, come on. Like, I respect that. And I really, I know it's hard from D1 to D, from D3 to D1. That's a hard transition over there, right? Next year, right, we're coming. We have three seasons coming soon for, for, for most you know, most athletes, what are you guys looking for for next season? Cause, Not even cause you guys, what are you looking for? are you for? looking for? Because we're going to come to the game, man. You got to let us know what's the plan. Like, yeah. what, what is your goal for what's next year, goal, personally, man. for the team? Personally, for the team, I think is to be, I mean, we talked about, you know, talking about being in 10 or being in 8 in the position-wise, and I think I talked about, about, like, covering ground and, like, you know, fighting for your teammates and doing all that, and I think, the more we learn from last year, and by the end of the like end of the season when we hit kind of a, we hit a stride. Right. We're just season ended, so you can't do much right. about it. But we hit a stride at the end. That was good. Where where we we won a few games, so it's important to go in saying like we we can do it. Right. You know? It's right. not like it's impossible. Definitely. We were able to do it. We beat two good teams also, and yeah. so we were able to play or three good teams. So then we were able to. Um, you know, win those games at the end, feel confident afterwards. And I think it's important to go into preseason field and, like, nothing nothing stopped. Right. And then, you know, you trick your brain a little bit, right. uh, a little bit, and you tell yourself that. And so then, you know, you go in and you're – my goal personally then is to just be, you know, to try to help raise it even more, to try to help raise the level as much as I can, to learn – or take from my own experiences and, and give younger guys – you know, we have a lot of new guys coming in. Um, and it'll be good to – It'll be good to see how they are, to see how they adapt. And, um, but also, I want to be a leader for them while also getting them into the team, making them feel comfortable, making Man, them feel like they're here. Awesome. You know, the transition is different. Division one is different. You can be hard on people, and you can also, you know, allow people in and allow them to feel like they're part of something. And I think that's the important part is we, I will be hard on you, but it's not going to be – it's in your best interest. It's an interest. It's yeah. honest yeah. interest. Right, right. And, yeah. you know, like yeah. like you said, sometimes it's, it's hard to see that on the moment. Like, you know, like for you, the ball, you were there. Maybe sometimes you're like, maybe this coach don't like me, the mm. team. But with right. time, you're like, it, okay. was, it was for me. You know, <laughs> I, I take yeah. it. Yeah. But like here, Mark, I have some, like, you know, just to finish, I have some question for you. Mm. So in college, what is the number one goal of the college team? Win games. Win games. Yeah. Okay. That's the goal. We've been saying this. <laughs> and then, and then we get told that quite often, actually. Win games? That that's, yeah, that's number one. <laughs> okay. We've been saying this. No, no, actually. Yeah. But, like, and then what, what's the difference between a big college, a big G1 school and then, like, average G1 school? Because they have, okay, let's compare two schools that have the same pound, okay? They have the same material, but one is huge on the program and one is not. What do you, th what do you think is a big difference between those guys? Because they have the same, pra like sometimes when I look at this team, I'm like, they have the same practice. Right. They have the same money to record. They have the same I don't equipment, know, equipment, like, information yeah. to everything. Mm -hmm. the, why one is there, like, you know, doing his thing and the other one is just, just there. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, it goes back to like, so you have the big programs that I'm not going to try to name all of them, but right, there's right. a few I have in mind. And it's like, those programs have an end goal every single year of national championship. Right. Some teams, you know, it, your end goals are very important to have because then you can build towards them and you incrementally you get you get where you need to go. Some some teams their goal is to make it to the tournament. Some teams their goal is to not finish last in their conference. So it's it it varies, it varies. by conference who you have because you'll have the top team in a conference. Their goal is to make it as far as they can in the national right. tournament. Right. And the and the you know bottom teams in the conference. That's that's a different goal. Right? So 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 do you, so either right now if, if you're a coach of the college team, are you more focused? on the goal or getting the right player? Like, I mean, like, are you more like yeah. a player coach or are you more like a goal coach? Like, I can have an okay player, mm -hmm. but if we, like, fight enough, we can get there. Or I need the good player to even get the chance to right. get there. What mm -hmm. kind of coach would you be? Say I just walked into a team. Like, I just walked into a, a new team or whatever. I'm, it's my first day. And we're, I would try to assess the players that we have, right? Okay. So I would, I would 
look at the guys that we have currently and I would make my assessments on my own and with my assistant coaches that I would have whatever and and look at the season and what it is and then be, try to be realistic because at the end of the day um, setting a high goal that they might not feel is attainable is tough but if you can set a goal that everyone feels is very attainable right. then the team is more likely to reach that goal right. now motivating is important because you can set a high goal and you can get your guys <laughs> motivated but some goals are just like outlandish yep. just, you can't yep. even fathom it like if i walked into a new team that was struggling and i said we're going to win the national championship this year i might get a lot of looks but yeah. obviously it may you know it makes for a good movie line but i would be realistic right. i would look at the players i have and then i would say okay i need to fill these areas with players that i want and then i would go hard in recruiting and i would try to get those players in the next two or three years right then once i have the players i like one or and have the guys and have the team together that I like, look at the drawing board again, and then be like, all right, we're setting a goal. We're letting them know this is the goal. And maybe we set that goal a few years back and we're like building to it. And now we tell them this is the team like, and that's how it kind of felt um, in high school a little bit. And then unfortunately we didn't make the state tournament in high school. Okay. But my last two years, it felt like it was a moment where everyone knew that we could. And you know, you get to that stage where it's like, on any team you're at, you almost know that, like, okay, this is the time we're gonna do it. You know, we don't have to worry about this. We're gonna right. try to go for it. Right. And um, and we know we could. Like, t I think there were two years, my senior year and junior year, I think we could have gone to state for sure. It didn't work out, no. but that's what we knew. And so then when you're a coach and you're able to tell your team that, and they believe you, and that's, I think that's probably the key. Man, so that's, that's what he does. Hey, Michael, yeah. let us know. Whatever, like, big time, if we create a team right now, he's going to be the coach. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he's going to be the we're gonna coach. Think about, we're going to think about that job <laughs> position for him, man. Hey, we're really glad to have you on the podcast, man. Okay, man. Like, having you. somebody from, like, you know, the first D1 program in Minnesota. I mean, not D1 program, men. Soccer program because we got a U of M because we got a U of M which is the one so, mm -hmm. but no that's really that's really something really we really fortunate for it and really glad to have you but like do you have anything else to say for the big time? Uh, for any players watching out there, just keep doing you. I guess if there's a, this is a podcast for the players, right? I should right, probably say right. something to that. For that. Just keep doing you and okay. uh, you know keep training hard and um, you know don't focus too much on external stuff. Focus on focus on what you can do and uh, be a good teammate, but then you know be competitive as well. Right. Yeah. He said it all. He said it all. But hey, before we end it up today's episode, please make sure you guys check out the other episode, man. Spotify, Apple Podcast. We're dropping a new episode every Wednesday, man. Make and sure you guys check the out channel. the content, man. Hey, where can they find you, though? Oh, uh, my, my handle? You asked for my handle? Man. At McCray Drong, M C R A Y D R O N G on Instagram. That's it. Drop. 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 Just Instagram. So it's phone number. His phone number is 412. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're good on that. Hey. Make sure you guys keep up with the content as far as us, OBT. Only, Only big time, time man. Let's, Let's get, get it. it.